forward here um, and get to the next step that I think a number of you are starting to actually crash up against, which is, you know, this is all well and good. We've folded these planes, rapid prototyped, and we put it on the site, and I kind of have an idea of how it works, but in reality, I don't know how the heck this thing is going to work, right? We all kind of butt up against that at some point during the design process, but what you need to do at that point is to essentially just, um, you know, stretch and pull, right? So as designers, nothing we do that is diagrammatic or process driven or some sort of like morphological, um, you know, algorithmic approach is going to be a literal translation into the project. It's extremely rare. So what you have to do is basically modify it, right? So we're gonna stretch and pull. The first step for me is I'm going to uh, create a new layer for these buses, first of all. I'll just leave them at black, that's fine. And then I'm going to extrude the curves of these buses. Do any of you guys recall how tall they were? Uh, 10 feet. Is that what they were? Okay. Sounds about right. Uh, both sides equals no, solid equals yes, so 10 feet should work fine. And I'm just going to grab them and put them into my site. Doesn't need to be perfect, but they're going to sit right about there for now. <coughs> 10 feet. So, um, one of the things that I kind of want to do with this space is create an interior enclosure with kind of a grand, uh, let me look at it in perspective, right? So I'm going to create kind of a grand connection here where the buses pull in um, and people can filter out, but it's, it's going to kind of blend the interior and exterior space a little bit. It kind of has to with this archetype, right? So um, my, part of my massing strategy is going to be to drop in a couple of planes that sort of kind of simulate what the enclosure is going to be. Um, so I'm going to create another surface, and I'm, going to, I'm just going to call this uh, planar test. You can call it whatever you want. Make it cyan. OK. And uh, so something that's kind of clever, I think, is uh, you know how when you grab an edge, you can uh, hold, I think it's control. No, not control, sorry. Shift. Darn. I'm forgetting my hotkeys here. Control, shift, and which one was it? Alt, shift. Darn. I'm forgetting now. Which one was it? It's not alt. Shift, it's not control. Anyway, uh, this is what this is how I'm going to do it anyway. Um, since I can't remember the hotkey for it, um, what you can do that's pretty clever is using the uh, the edge selection option. You can very easily just create handrails and guardrails just by pulling up the edge of a surface. In terms of massing, that's pretty powerful. So I'm going to just Control Shift click and grab these surface edges. And oh, I need to double check that my other layer is on, and it didn't even retain my layer stuff. So, um, so anyway, I'm going to take these and say extrude curve, and I'm going to extrude it four feet. So we're kind of getting at something with that, aren't we? Right? It's a pretty good rapid prototyping way to create the idea of either an interior or exterior environment. And then, um, you know, to kind of make things a little bit easier on myself, I'm also going to control shift click on this surface edge and do the same thing, but I'm going to go down. So extrude curve, whoop, if I could spell it right. And I'm just going to pull it down as long as that surface goes down far enough beyond the bottom plane, I'm good with that. 
I don't need to worry too much about it beyond that. And the good thing is here, when I'm looking at this surface, um, I need to essentially just verify that it kind of creates the idea of enclosure, and then I'll worry about trimming it out later. Okay, so this is kind of a complete surface on that side of the building. Now the other thing I want to do is create a surface, a similar surface condition on the other side of the building, um, but I don't want it to conflict with these buses. So I'm going to start off by bringing one in and down from this edge. So I'll just kind of carry the extrude surface down like that. That's a good start. I'll do another one right there. And then I don't really have an edge to borrow here in this particular location. So for me, I'm just going to um, draw one. So I'll just kind of draw a line. I'll say line command from here to say, well, let's find a spot that's going to work for me. Actually, I'll just follow the, the axis. So usually you'll have some geometry um, that creates this relationship, some diagram. But for me, with, with project on, I can just kind of lock to that and just pull it a little bit beyond the other surface. And that'll give me something to then extrude. OK, so like I said, these are massing elements. They're not going to actually be the surface because I need to enclose it separately. So um, the, the major driver here is to say, well, where, is, where's, where are the uh, intersections that are going to create that enclosure properly? So um, I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm going to call this glazing. I'll make these ones green. Okay. Let's see here. All right. So I'm hoping that that one's going to work out for me, but it might not. We might need to do some real kind of crazy pushing and pulling to get this sort of thing to work. Um, so actually, I, I think I know how I want to do this. I'm going to start off by creating a larger plane that's just going to trim off everything that's below grade. So I'll do um, just a four point surface here. And I'm just going to make it really big on, where's my negatives layer? I'll put on modifiers. That's OK. So I'm just going to create a blue surface like this. And so I'm going to grab that blue surface with trim, make that a cutting object, and then trim off all the surfaces underneath. So how many of you guys have no idea why I did that? You guys all know why I did that? True, yeah, actually, it helps It helps in that sense. But most importantly, um, I won't have an intersection between those two surfaces without cutting it. So if it still sits below, see how the, the red line here, this bold red line, just kind of disappears into the blue cyan line? That's because the blue cyan line does not have, or the blue cyan surface does not have a termination line that is technically intersecting with those two surfaces. So... When I go to my glazing layer, I should not be able to select that intersection. Oh, look at that. It actually did. Oh, am I getting a smart track off of something? Yeah, see? So when I try to select that as an intersection, it won't let me. I have intersection object snap turned on, and there's no intersection there. If I, I don't know how I snapped onto something where it allowed me to. But anyway, um, after you've trimmed it, then you'll have an intersection between those two surfaces like that. So you see how powerful that is? 
You just need to be careful about where those intersections are happening. So likewise, on the other side of this surface now, it hangs outside of the extents of the site. So I need to be careful about where I'm putting my glazing. So I'm going to essentially um, draw a surface that goes from this point to there, but I'm going to stop short of going all the way to the other end. And in fact, I'm going to snap to the intersection point of the setback line and uh, the surface. And then I'm going to close it off at the top corner. So now you can see by the way those two surfaces blend that they are coplanar blend in color, I mean, that they are coplanar. Co and you can remove this and now start to work toward another enclosure on the other side of the building. And in fact, I'm going to have to split this, it looks, and looks like, and create some more enclosure in that particular condition. Um, I should probably just get that in here and show you guys what that looks like. So uh, let's see. I'll need to go from that point to here. Let me try something. Can I actually trap that? I don't think I can. Actually, I need to think through that part. Let's see. split it. Oh, I know. So I'll do it this way. I'm just going to draw a line down along that edge, which didn't work. down the edge, and now I've got a curve there, which I can extrude in that direction. So that'll help me get the directionality I'm looking for. So I say extrude curve, and I'm going to pick um, from the, oh, I'm snapping at too many things here. Extrude curve. All right, so here's what's significant. When you've got a curve like that that you're trying to create an extension of, um, you have to set a direction. And I'm going to set that direction from an intersection point along there to the end point and then pull it off. And then likewise, I need to do the same thing at the bottom Oops. to just make sure all of this is about making sure that when you trim a surface, it's fully encapsulated the way that you want it to. So when I pull this one down, looks like the blue axis is not exactly along the lines of that surface. So I need to, uh, do I want to do extrude curve? No, I want to move edge. So I'm just going to move, and I'm going to move from this point to that point. Right, so now I've got a complete trim, trimmable surface. So I do the trim command, and I select this surface, and that's, sorry, this surface and trim the outside of that surface. Okay, so that is significant, right? I created, I created a little filler panel for the area that I did not want to keep as a continuous plane from the first floor to the second floor. And then at that point, you can join the two. I wonder if it'll make me use a Boolean. So you join the two, and then you do merge all faces. Oh, it didn't let me do merge all faces. Why not? I'm doing join. Merge all faces. Interesting. I wonder, oh, it's not exactly planar. Look at that, I didn't do it right. Hmm. All right, well, my mistake. I made a mistake there. It looks like I must have just messed up my first extrusion.
Yeah, I messed up my first extrusion. So for the video's sake and for your sake, I'm going to fix that real quick. So control shift, whoops. There we go. Control shift, grab the edge. Extrude curve. Set the direction. I'm going to go from a midpoint along this. looks about right. I'm looking at it in top view, that looks right to me again. So hopefully this one will work out all right. Control shift, grab that. Then I'm going to do a move command on this one. Go from here to there. Then I should be able to trim, get rid of that, and then join surface and surface. Merge all faces. There we go. All right, so that one worked out. So it looks like I had an error with how I uh, trimmed it out. So that's how you're going to um, join those surfaces. So what you're going to wind up with is a, a truncated relationship between the first and second floor. That also gives you then a uh, point underneath that you can snap to when you're doing your second floor uh, or your first floor surface. Does that make sense? Kind of how I'm thinking through this. I know it was a really long kind of monologue, but I'm trying to get you to just visualize how you would go through creating the actual exterior environment. So I imagine you probably have questions after that. And then, well, so the next step then would be to do the same thing where you begin to transition all these surfaces, and then uh, this one would go away, and I'd figure out a way to actually create a surface between these two. So for me, I would actually just grab this, and I'm going to extrude that curve then. But I'm going to do it in the direction of this edge so that it makes sense and just pull it out beyond the other surface. So now I can use that surface to trim off. You guys kind of following me here, how, it, how the relationship works between these? Oh, that went down. Oh, that makes sense. Trim, we'll trim outside of this and that. That. And that. Okay. You guys kind of getting that? So now I have my, you know, if you look at it from the street side or the, the parking lot side, I've got pretty much my entire exterior environment fully developed. See a lot of blank faces. Okay. 